Okay, no matter what I do, I'm going to always put down the slide upside down the first time, no matter what. Okay, what about this one? This one, again, is a Paisley Tide differential. It does have horn cysts. So I guess you, again, could be thinking of a desmoplastic trico F versus the top of a back. Yep, desmoplastic trichoepithelioma versus microcystic adnexal carcinoma. Same differential as the couple cases ago. And again, my vote here personally would be again for desmoplastic trichoepithelioma. Um, although I looked through all of these slides and I did not appreciate anyone that I would definitively call MAC. So I don't know if one of these ended up actually being a MAC. This is not my study set, as you guys know. This is were assembled by Dr. Faringer, and she kindly let us use them. Um, and then, oh, look, you could say here, look, it's a papillary mesenchymal body, right? Sure looks like it, little round cells in the stroma pushing into a basaloid nest. But I think that this is probably not really part of the tumor. This is probably the hair papilla, which is the thing that a papillary mesenchymal body is mimicking, which is at the root of normal hairs. And so these little tiny vellus hairs, if you cut deep enough into them, you're gonna see hair papilla. And um, so recognizing the hair papilla or papillary mesenchymal body is super useful in real life practice because when it's in a tumor, that really strongly favors, uh, to me, is essentially definitive for something being a benign follicular tumor. Some people disagree and think that basals can have papillary mesenchymal bodies, but I don't personally believe that. Uh, maybe I'll change my mind eventually. But the other thing is it can help you when you're seeing little nests of blue cells in the dermis on a case and you're wondering, is that a hair follicle or a little bit of basal cell carcinoma on a shave biopsy? Once I find the little, the hair papilla, these little stromal cells, that's a, again, that points me to this being a benign hair follicle, uh, not a piece of basal cell. But I think here it's not part of the tumor. And that's the other thing that complicates the workup of hair follicle and sweat gland and sebaceous tumors is sometimes it's hard to tell what's actually part of the neoplasm versus what's an entrapped sebaceous gland or extend, you know, an entrapped um, uh, eccrine duct or background hair follicles. So that can make it a lot more difficult. But I, my vote on this would be favor desmoplastic trichoep. And again, I just add a comment that it's really difficult to definitively exclude microcystic adnexal carcinoma without seeing the base of the lesion. And here, what we've had is these, these uh, keratin microcysts, they've ruptured and the keratin has come out and it's made a little keratin granuloma. That's a very common finding in anything that has keratin filled cystic spaces. That includes trichoeps, microcystic adnexal carcinoma, squamous cell carcinomas when they rupture and their keratin pearls spill out, that can happen. Um, basically, anytime you have rupture of these keratin cysts, it can produce granuloma and it can also produce calcifications. So I feel like those things are common findings, but not discriminatory findings in telling these entities apart.